Hey guys, this is Candle, and welcome to Celestial Dreams. Uh, this is the first day of the server launch, so things may be a little bit uh, hectic or confusing and everything. Uh, this is basically where you first join in on... Let's see. Yeah, you have disembarked from an airship that has come to the Bastion. Here you will be able to gain citizenship. Basically, you're here for a census. Uh, we have a little proverb here. The first step towards getting somewhere is to decide that you are not going to stay where you are. Uh, first up back this way is actually the OAS New Beginnings. This is the airship that brings you to Bastion. Go ahead and explore this a little bit. I'm actually on TeamSpeak right now, but I have it set up so that you guys can't hear them. Uh, neither can they hear me unless I push a, but push a button. So if at any point it seems like I'm holding a conversation with myself rather than with you guys, although technically I am holding a conversation with myself right now by talking to you guys, but basically that just means that I'm talking to them, so you're unfortunately only hearing half of the conversation. However, now that we've fully explored the OAS New Beginnings, let's go past the initial spawn point. There we go. And so your journey begins. A few uh, pointer signs here. Check slash help for all the commands available to you. Use slash mod rec to get a uh, mod's help. Be sure to use MC stats to check your available skills. Head to the library for more information. Be careful though, you'll be unable to return here. Yeah, this is a single one-off spawn point. You can only get here once, you can never come back. Over here we have an, a little bit of an observation deck. You can see the OA, the OAS Jubilee over there, and a few other bits of uh, Bastion. That over there is the temple to the Atea. Now, there are a few Easter eggs on this island. I'm going to show you one of them. It's, it's actually kind of a neat one. Uh, if you go over here and come down this way, and back in here, you've got a little portal uh, Easter egg. Sad the cake, sadly, is a lie, and that's about it. So anyways, when you're ready to leave the little tutorial island, uh, everything is kind of just guiding you straight to a single point. When you're ready to leave this, you go ahead and jump down here. So let's go ahead and do this. And it is a bit of a fall, uh, but you can see quite a bit of everything on the way down. There we go. Let me let me just make sure I'm in the RP channel chatting there. Yeah. There we go. Do a little bit of RPing. Aw, and he ignored me. There we go. Okay, so basically, you come out from there, and you have a choice of, of where to go. Let's see, how much money do I have? Should have 200, uh, 30. Okay, that's interesting. It's not nearly as much as I thought it would be. Okay. Zelder is off into his office in the government building. First up, though, let's uh, go up this way and explore the temple. Let's take a look at the temple. So coming out here to the left, we have the, uh, I, I, this really has no, this little plaza has no name. I personally call it the Parade of Seasons. You've got a little emblem in here for each season. You've got spring there, fall there, winter over here, and summer there. Toss a coin in the pool for good luck. Uh... I believe that's for emotes. There we go. Wishes for yeah, we'll do this. Yeah. 
There we go. Okay. Now, this up here is the uh, the temple. It originally started life as a warehouse and then became a military fortress during the Age of Sorrow. And afterwards, it became a temple. Now, we've got a little... This wall is mostly decorative now. You can just walk around and through it. There's actually an Easter egg underneath the uh, pond here, but you kind of need to be able to edit blocks in order to get down into it. And I don't think I can edit blocks right now. And I'm not going to try. But there's a little hidden room down there, some signs most people can't see. Whoa, it's getting to be nighttime. Anyways, up this way is the temple itself. It's a really large building. And there are shrines within here to all of the Atea. All 11 of them. Just as there are 11 towers. Now you can go up to each floor via the, the central tower, or you can go up via these two side towers. However, they don't get you to straight to the vantage point. Over here we have the shrine to Yamas, the Traveler. He is the patron Itea of the Zali. Over this way is just a little seating area. Over here is to Lane, who is basically mischief. Actually, I think we can... Can we open these up? Yeah. You can see a little creeper face, because that's kind of her emblem. Uh, what was in Yamas's chest? What was in his shrine? We'll take a look. And we've got a saddle. On the other side, this is a very large building, so it can be easy. It, it takes a while to get across to everywhere. Uh, on the other side here, we have a shrine to... Solon Solihar. This is the god of invention and redstone. This is the patron Atea of the Arathal. In here we have different redstone items to represent him. At the other end on this level should be Kalesh, I believe. Solihar's twin brother. Yes, Kalesh, god of hunt and the dancing blade. Kalesh is basically the patron Atea of the Marathi, which is what my character is. I am Oathkeeper Boss, that's spelled B-A-S-S, -S, and I am a Marathi, who is a Blade Dancer, which is basically a title achieved through mastering swordsmanship and so on. Uh, and I eventually became a, a Keeper after devoting myself to defending uh, various uh, uh, caravans and so on. Uh, keep defending them from bandits and, and stuff. This is just a little balcony out here, platform and so on. And you can actually even get up to the next level here this way, but you can't quite get in. So we'll go ahead and go back into the staircase. And here we have Zasha, goddess of the sea. She is the patron of the... Uh, oh, she's got nothing in here. She should have at least a water bucket or something. She is the patron of the Lasha, our lizard-like race. Over here is Amavain, goddess of nature and the seasons. She is the patron of the Oakborn, which is a, a human-like race, much as the Zali are, just more... Uh, not necessarily, I wouldn't say civilized, but more settled. Over here we have Dalmor, the patron of the Dalmor, god of battle and blacksmithing. The Dalmor are basically our dwarf-like race. The Arathal and Maradi are, are basically our elf-like races. The Arathal would be closer to the high elves and the uh, Maradi would be closer to the uh, shadow elves as seen possibly in uh, Elder Scrolls, the Dunmer. We'll go up the central uh, staircase here to the next level. It'll take a while, but we're there. And have the shrines to the the original Itea. Here is Kor, god of torture, corruption, and murder. This is basically our evil god. There's nothing in his... I don't think there's anything in any of these up here. 
Here we have Ishlim, the goddess of creation and the patron of the Oath Keepers. Now, the Oath Keepers are uh, something that regular players will probably never become. It's uh, specialized just for certain staff members, specifically uh, specifically admins and, and GMs and lore developers. And the admins and it, for the admins and GMs, it's, it's a way for them to uh, RP their abilities. And for the lore developers, it's a way to actually RP being keepers so that they have a proper RP uh, roleplay presence rather than people just continually... Uh, rather than the, the Oath Keepers just running around willy-nilly just doing their best to keep everything running. Here we have the Shrine to Korash, the God of the Sun. There's nothing in here. And... Last round should be Malodra, goddess of the moon. Now, Korash and Malodra together are the parents of all the Atea, except for Ishlim and uh, Kor. Ishlim, Kor, and Korash are all siblings, with Ishlim and, and Korash actually being twins. Uh, Malodra was created by Ishlim to... Uh, uh, not necessarily to appease Korash, but to console him because he was very lonely at the time. So if we keep going up here, we have a very nice vantage point of the city. And unfortunately, we're, we're uh, going to be seeing it mostly at night. And the thing is, our nights last about an hour. Our full, our, our full day-night cycle is two hours long. And, and we did this for a reason because it means that uh, a month in real life equates to about a year in roleplay. So people can actually re uh, age their characters somewhat realistically. So if we keep going up here, we'll eventually get to the uh, vantage point. And there are a lot of stairs all over the place throughout Valinor. Here we go. We're almost to the top. You can tell because the materials for the uh, crystal emblem have changed. Here we go. Uh, there's a little bit of a fountain here, so you can't really see too much until you get out. But you get a nice little vantage point of... There's the back half of the city. Ah, uh, this way. And the city itself goes that way. And over there is the spawn island, the, the tutorial island. So let's go ahead and go back down. And this is going to take a while as well. Now, you may wonder why I'm not warping or, or anything like that, and that's because for right now, I am a, just a lore developer. I'm not an admin like I was in the past, and the reason for this is, uh, I guess the best reason would be to say that it allows me to, more time to actually roleplay with people. Because right now, we only have one other lore developer besides myself, so that is a lot of, of uh, Oathkeeper roleplay we have to sustain between the two of us. The rest of the, the keepers, the admins and GMs, will roleplay when they can, but a lot of their time, especially in these uh, first few weeks, is going to be devoted to answering mod wrecks and, and making sure everything is running smoothly. At some point, I, I may eventually move back up into uh, more of a, a, more of a, a, a managerial position or leadership position, but that probably won't be for a while. Okay, well, we're, that was the first level, so now we've got one more, and then we're down to the bottom. I'm going to have to go to the shop next in order to buy some food. Well, that's a good place to stop, or uh, place to go next. can show you the shops and, and so on. I think I may actually still be set to the admin's perm group. So, uh, I'm not entirely sure. But if I am, this is going to be interesting trying to figure out how to, inter how to interact with the NPCs in order to buy everything. Here we are. We're back on the lower platform. Now, these first couple videos are probably just a tour of bashing. Right now... Uh, Roleplay is restricted to Bastion while everybody gets settled in. Eventually we'll go out to the other cities and that's when I'll do tours of them. 